Okay. So, so Islamic concept of God, basically, right? So, what we say is that so, you know, God is one, right? And that really means really, really one, right? And uh, meaning, so He was there forever, right? Mm -hmm. And He has many different attributes. Part of those attributes are that He creates. Mm. Right. So actually, I think a good way for me, uh, what I find beneficial is just to give you the, the full story of like where did we come from, right? Sure. So I'm going to try to speed that up as well. So, so the idea being that okay, at, at some point in time in the history, there was only God. Right. Right. God has been there forever. Right. He created various creations, and at one particular time, what happened was there were angels, right? So angels are a creation of God. Mm -hmm. They do not disobey God. So right. they do as they're commanded. They don't have any. Free they will. worship God, yeah. Right. So they have, they don't have any free will. There is a different type of creation of God, uh, which is called jinn in yes. Arabic. Right. They are essentially made from fire. fire. Right. Right. Some of them obey God. Some of them do not obey God. Mm -hmm. That's right? different. Yeah. Right. So some of them are even Muslims. Some of them are Christians. Some of them are Jews. So on and so forth. Right. So that's the whole parallel universe. Right. Right. But this specific point in time that I'm describing, there were angels. And it was one jinn. Okay? So he was, you know, he was very much honored and he was in the company of angels. Right. This okay? is uh, Satan. See, this is Satan. Right, yes. Right? So God told angels, and obviously Satan as well, that, hey, I'll be creating men. Out of clay. Yeah, out of clay. And they will be, you know, succeeding on earth. Right? So angels, because they understood the concept of man and that he would have free will and so on and so forth, they said, you know, why would you create them and we always obey you, we always praise you, and he he will basically cause corruption and murder on earth. Mm -hmm. So God told them, hey, you know what, I know what you don't know. Right? And they accepted that, but because, yeah, I mean, we cannot ever comprehend the wisdom of God. Yes, there is some evil, short-term evil that comes out of men, but there's a lot of good that comes out of it as well. Mm -hmm. And that also shows you the perfection of God. Right? Mm -hmm. Because look at that. He's able to create people or creation that's deprived or that does not have free will, is also able to create creation which has free will, but in a way that they cannot bypass the will of God, right? Mm -hmm. So even though I have will, I can choose what I need to do, but that will is under the will of God, right? Mm -hmm. So in that sense, for example, we believe that nobody can harm or benefit me except by the permission of God. Right, so which means that you know, if there are diseases that are trying to attack me, or even human beings trying to plot against me, or what have you, they have that sort of freedom, but their freedom is limited by the power and the will of God. Mm -hmm. And as we saw, how He saved you know people in the past and His pe chosen people and so on and so forth. But anyway, so He said that, and then to establish that, He taught Adam. He gave knowledge to Adam, the first human being, and He then presented all those things in front of the angels, right? And He said, "Tell me the names of these things. Tell me about these things, if you know." And angels are like, you know what? Glory to be you. Uh, we do not know about this thing. We only know what you have taught us. And then he said, Adam, tell them about these things. Tell them the names. Tell them about these things. And Adam told them. This is a horse. This is a rabbit. Right. So Adam gave them the information, and and God told them, Look, I told you, I know what you do not know, right? And then he ordered them to prostrate to Adam. Right? To prostrate to Adam. That's not a prostration of worship. That's a prostration of honor. Because at the end of the day, they're doing that, not because of Adam, they're doing that to obey mm -hmm. God. And angels did that, right? Now Satan, who has a free will, mm -hmm. started getting jealous, right? Because before it's just angels and me, like, you know, I have all this status and now, right? And he disobeyed God, right? And he argued that, you know, I am better than him, why should I prostrate to him, and so on and so forth, right? So basically, the submission was reduced and the ego and his own intellect was you know, boosted. Mm -hmm. So he argued, he did, right? And God said, you know, what's going on? So he, he didn't apologize or anything. He just kept arguing, right? And he said that, you know what? Do not destroy me. Give me time. And I'll show you that this, this people, his progeny, would not be of the grateful ones to you. God said, fair enough. So you have respite till the last day, right? And whoever follows you, you and the followers will be thrown into hellfire. But my chosen slaves will not follow you. You do not have any power on my chosen slaves. So, so far so good, right? Mm -hmm. Then God told Adam, and he created a wife for him, right? Again, so 
that sort of bonding and love existed in pre-world time as well, right? So as we were talking about earlier, it will be in the uh, after death. As right, well. yes. So he created a companion for him and he said, okay, you know what, now this beautiful garden of paradise, you guys eat, drink, enjoy here. You don't have to work, don't Improve have to worry about multiply. anything, mm -hmm. but just leave this tree. Right. And that was a test, right? It was no reasoning or logic given that, hey, you know, this tree would cause, you know, addiction or, you know, you'd grow fat or whatever. There was nothing like that. Just like, just leave the tree. That's part of submission, right? So when you trust someone, you don't have any problem following them. You have love and submission as part of that whole thing. And now Shaitan or Satan, he started what he had to do, right? He started testing them or he started persuading them or influencing them and, you know, enticing them towards that tree. Right? How he would do that is by making false promises, including that if you if you eat. No, is it still the knowledge of, of the fruit of good and evil of the knowledge of good and evil? Because the, the tree right had the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. Okay, so from a Quranic perspective, mm -hmm. we don't have that concept. Okay, that it had the knowledge of the good and evil. Okay, right. Okay, because there's the difference. Right. So okay. that knowledge was already given to Adam. Right. So right now the knowledge is what? Eat and drink. Enjoy yourself. Yeah, be fruitful, multiply. Right. Right. And uh, just leave that tree. That's the knowledge, right? right? Mm -hmm. So everything is permissible except that tree. So then Satan came, and he kept enticing them that you know if you eat from that tree, you would become like angels. You would have a kingdom that would never never perish. So he started promising them things that are basically deception. And he does the same thing to us, right? I mean, right. Whenever you do something that we regret, at that moment we prioritize that for some pleasure, for some instant gratification, what have you, right? Mm -hmm. And those things still continue. Same type of thing. Mm -hmm. He just kept, keeps promising us mm -hmm. false promises. So eventually, you know, they ate from that tree. So that was an act of disobedience, right? Um, when that happened, they did not argue. They did not say, oh, why did you create the tree? You know, we should have a freedom of choice. You know why would you know you didn't tell us and you should have protected us you know why did they why did you even create the tree right just keep us away from it whatever right they did not argue at all they acknowledged and took responsibility of their sin right they said you know we fall short we wronged ourselves if you will not forgive us we'll be from the losers right so they had a sincere repentance okay that's different so god actually did forgive them so they were forgiven but they were cast out of the garden. Right. So they were put on, on this earth. By the sweat of their brow. Sorry? By the sweat of their brow, they will have to till the Yes, yeah, so we don't have that specific detail in there. Mm -hmm. Right? The point what we have been told is that you know, they were put on earth, and Satan was also put on earth, and God told them that, you know, live on earth, and whoever will follow my guidance will have no fear and no, uh, no fear and no grief. Right? And then you'll be returned back to the paradise. Mm -hmm. But whoever... Disbelieve in me, deny my words, if does not follow it, they have the consequences of hellfire and they will live in it forever. Okay, so that's the, the beginning, right? After that, God sent down various prophets and messengers to remind people how to worship God and to take them away from the false deceptive promise of Shayatin or Satan and his followers, right? And uh, so they kept, you know, growing and what have you. And over time, obviously, Abraham came, right? And then he eradicated all the idol worship and so on and so forth. His children, his progeny, then all the way up to Moses, right? So Moses came. So all the prophets were calling the same thing, worship God. Nobody was calling to the worship of the prophets themselves because, you know, they are all human beings like you and I in a, in a physical sense. But from a spiritual perspective, they are actually speaking on behalf of God. They're mm -hmm. speaking and implementing on behalf of God. Right. So from these prophets and messengers, the, the laws differed, right? The physical laws differed, like in terms of what you can eat, what you cannot eat, you know, how many times you have to pray in a specific manner, all those yeah. details vary. Sacrifices. Yeah. So these things, small details vary, but the essential goal was that God is God. We are human beings. We are under his command. We are his servants, so on and so forth. So each prophet also came to his specific people. Right. As I mean, so the words about like, you know, I've been sent to the lost sheep of, uh, you know, uh, Israel. Mm -hmm. Right. So that notion is that, OK, those those messengers are for their specific nations. Right. Not for people outside of that nation. 
So anyways, so they came. So Moses came. He had his law. Then Jesus came, right? So everybody that believed in Moses was supposed to pray to Jesus. Right. right. Jesus showed them the miracles, so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. Again, he was he was never calling on the concept of Trinity. That was something that was invented later, mm-hmm. right? His call was to the call of worship of God, mm-hmm. right? And that's what he was calling for. He also has a prophecy about you know his brother or the next prophet coming in from the Arabs, right? So yeah, the, uh, yeah, you have to show me that. Okay, yeah. cool. So uh, so I have some references. You know, I can show mm-hmm. you that. So the whole point being that, so that was the whole thing, right? Mm-hmm. Now, but, but the notion is that look, God is the, the only one worthy of worship. Mm-hmm. He is the only, only one who is all hearing. All knowing. All knowing, all seeing. All seeing. All seeing yeah. Right. Which all means, powerful. which means that this conversation that we are having is only being heard by God. Right. Not by Muhammad, not by Jesus, not by Moses. Right. right? Mm-hmm. My next word after 15 minutes what it will be is known by God only. Right. Right? So if I need to ask something, so I can say, hey, can you pass me the pen? Right? That's not a problem because you're able to physically do that, right? But if I want God, you know what? Bless me with the right information to pass on to Hobo. Right? It's it's not, it's injustice if I say, oh, Muhammad, inspire me to say the right words to God, to, mm-hmm. to Hobo. Right. That's the injustice against God. Right? Because... Only God is the all-hearing one. Only God is the one who can fully help me. Nobody else. Yeah, right? that was always my problem with Catholicism because we pray to Mary. Exactly. Why are we praying to Mary? You know, yeah. we're supposed to be praying through Jesus to God. But that's know. thing, not even through Jesus, right? Just well, yeah, you're yeah. taking it to another level right. with the same type of question. Well, you know, if I'm saying why we have to pray to Mary to speak to Jesus for him to have a chat with his dad, right? Right. When we could just go to Jesus and he'll go to the Father. Exactly. On our behalf, you're taking it that step away and go, then why Jesus? Exactly. And, but if you think about it, you know, the reason why it went to Mary, right, is because once you create that exception, there's always going to be the next person closer. Well, then you, then you start praying to saints. Exactly. That's exactly and what I, I, lo- I lost my keys. I'm going to pray to St. Michael. Of right. Whatever. That was the exact name I was going to say. Right, right. right? No, yes, I'm falling. Yeah. Yeah. So and that was always, always my yeah. problem. So once you create one exception, it's always going to keep continuing. Mm-hmm. Next, 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 right? right? And then, you know, okay, so because now in my time, recent time, this was this saint or, you know, I was close to this thing, you know, maybe Mother Teresa would have you this and that. And you just like keep going on, right? Mm-hmm. Always kind of create ex- exceptions. So within, with, I don't know if I'm going to trail you off, but so when Constantine had his council, 300, whatever it was, and they came up, they, they brought brought across, they finalized what's called the canon, so the 66 books of the, of, of, of the Bible as we know it today, mm-hmm. and and then they uh, solidified the uh, the concept of the of the Trinity through the Nicene Creed. I believe in God, the Father, Almighty Creator of Heaven, and I believe Jesus Christ is only Son, our Lord. Is that because that Rome was a pagan society with multiple gods? You had to still like the centrality of a God being one. So trying to find a way to infuse a tri being to appease also those who believe in multiple gods at the same time saying God is one and causing a confusion. Right. So I personally do not know the intentions or what what led to that those influences. But that's what occurred. Right. Yeah, yeah. But why did it occur that way? I don't know. Right. Right. I mean, that's a deeper discussion in itself. Right. But one thing I know, like, I mean, in general, it's easier to persuade human beings by another human being, right? Yeah. And that happens a lot in all different cultures, right? If you take a look at Indian culture, if you take a look at, you know, Buddhism, what have you, it's, for some reason, it's easier for people. Because I guess one way of thinking about it, and I'm just like, this is my own thinking process. One way of thinking about it is just like, you know, celebrity culture, right? It's easier for people to get around a celebrity, yeah. right? Rap, and, and also, I mean, Donald so, Trump. Yeah, there you go, right? Yeah. So from that angle, and also from from a Satan's perspective, right? Because mm-hmm. he's also trying to influence us, of course, yeah. right? And the best best thing that he can get away with is this, right? I mean, if he can detach us from the Creator, say, look, I, I told you, they're not gonna be thankful to you, and he can connect us to a human being, regardless of how righteous that human being was. Boom, he's done, right? Then nothing else matters. You can be very good, very kind, you have a lot of social charities going on, no problem, right? But 
He has just connected you with so, the creator. I'm not putting I'm not putting words in your mouth. Right. But it sounds to me mm-hmm. that Christianity as we know it today has been corrupted by the devil. No, I mean I would say it had it can be influenced. Influenced. By oh, okay, better yeah. word. Right. Yeah. So even though a Christian thinks I am worshiping the one true God, Satan put these Intermediaries. Intermediaries, good word, thank you. In between, yeah. that is making us not do that, or us Christians not do that, but they still believe they are. So they're ignorant. Exactly. Actually, that is the word that God uses for them. Pardon? That is the word that God uses for Christians. People of the book. What? Well, so people ignorant. of the books are Jews and Christians, right? Right. So now, Quran has two distinctions, especially at the time of the Prophet Muhammad, right? That there are people, so the first chapter that we have, and that applies to Christians, that applies to Jews, that also applies to Muslims. She bought me this, by the way. I wanted to show it to yeah. you. So that, that applies to all three, mm-hmm. right? And there's two types of people. One are people who, are, who have good intentions, but they're misguided. Right. As you said, ignorant. Ignorant, Right? Yes. And traditionally speaking, that, that in, in general, it applies to Christians, as you said, right? But not Jews. No, and Jews... In general, not all of them, in general, there is a different word that's applied to them, and that is people who have knowledge, but they don't obey. So they're, they're, they're um, so, yeah, okay. so they are, so for example, yeah, so, so for example, sh- Satan, he had knowledge, right? Yes. He didn't obey. Yeah, he knows, yeah. Right? So Jews, I mean, even from a, by a biblical perspective, you know, like Moses told them to do this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, first thing they did, they walked away. They made a, they they made a calf out of exactly out of gold. right. Yeah. So they just keep kept disobeying, right? right? Yeah. So that's their in majority, right? Not everyone, but that's their nature in general, mm-hmm. right? We're talking about in general, right? Christianity. I mean, God says in Quran clearly that the closest to believers are Christians. That is because of them are people who fear God. When the verses of God are recited to them, they realize the truth. Their eyes flow in tears, and they. You know, believe in the Lord, right? Because it's just that they had the full intention, but I'm ready to submit. It's just that's all I know. And when you give them the light, it's like, yeah, that makes sense. And you know, the ones that are true and sincere of them, they just there's no problem for them to, you know, jump the ship. Take the, take just the like, step forward. And, just and, like how they did from Moses to Jesus, right? Right. Because because we not we don't have any association with personalities, right? I mean, fine. I mean, Moses. That's all we know. That's it, right? Because those are Muslims too, right? People who are following Moses, they will be in paradise. Because that's the law. And Jesus come, you upgrade, right? And, and Jesus said, that today you will be with me in paradise. Exactly. Yeah, okay. And then when Muhammad comes, then you upgrade as well, right? Mm-hmm. So that's so that's the whole thing. So so that's, yes, yeah, so, so basically right now we're just still talking about Islamic concepts. Yes, yes, right, yeah. Right? So is that, this is only God, right? So now he has basically put us here. There's going to be different tests. We will be eventually returned to him, mm-hmm. right? And we're going to come to the concept of salvation. But essentially, this is the understanding of God. Right now, part of that understanding of God is that God has two types of will, and that's a very important concept to understand as well. God has two types of will. Will, right? Mm-hmm. So, for example, God does not want me to steal, and cause corruption on Earth. That's the will of God, right. right? But it's a will of God that's not enforced all the time. Okay, because right. people do, do steal, and right? Do, and do so cause I do have free will to do that, right? Right, but. Let's say I want to steal, you know, uh, your car, right? Mm-hmm. Actually, my car got stolen like a month ago. It actually got stolen from my parking oh, wow. right? And I got it back in a week, right? I mean, obviously, police have, apparently, it's very easy to steal cars in Toronto. They don't have time to actually go after thieves, by the way. Okay. It's like, you know, it's just up to, it just depends on who stole your car. If you just did it for fun or some 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 crime that he wants to commit, it's gonna just dump your car and yeah, you know, we'll find it. it up, yeah. Right? If you did it like strategically to dismantle it, sell the parts, whatever. How you gonna exactly. find it? Yeah. So the point being, I got my car back, right? Right. So the, the 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 point I was trying to say is that you know eventually it's controlled by God, right? So I do have my free will, but my free will is under the you know approval of God. So my free will can do some short-term evil, but it's not evil in the bigger sense. Because eventually everything that happens has a bigger wisdom. For example, you know, one can ask why create Satan, right? right. But then one can ask why even create human beings, 
right? Why not just have angels, as the angels already said? Mm -hmm. But imagine if there were only angels, you don't see all this beautiful side of God, the side of God that can show you that He's able to punish, the side of God that, that shows you that He can run a world where people have free will, but still under His command, the side of God that shows you that He's forgiving. He forgave Adam, right? He forgave, like, you know, people of Moses, right? He forgave them even though they did what they did, right? And so on and so forth. And He forgives us, like, I mean, how many sins and, you know, misdeeds that we do, and He still lets us enjoy the food and drink the water and, you know, enjoy the bread Wake and all that. in the you. morning, yeah. So, so these all these sides, you wouldn't see that if you only had angels. It's because the angels worship God. Exactly. So with that, you see a more comprehensive, more complete side of God. So my actual challenge is that you cannot have a more perfect or more complete definition of God or more monotheistic definition of God than what, is, what, what Quran has. Right? And as I was saying, there are reasons that I believe in Islam, and that's one of the, my top reasons that you cannot have a better definition of God than this sort of understanding, right? So the reason I'm saying so, that's why there's two types of will. One is this will that he wants us to do something, but it's given a choice. He does not want us me, don't want me to worship Muhammad. He does not want me to worship Jesus. He does not want me to worship idols. But I can if I want to. I'm physically capable of, right? Right. But he doesn't want. So that's called his legal will. Legal will. Right? Which is, you know, in the common media, you hear it as Sharia law. Asha. The, the Sharia law. The, sh the Sharia. The Sharia? Yeah. Or, how do you pronounce that in English? Uh, you know, Sharia law. Oh, Sharia. So, Sharia, yeah, yeah. yeah, there you go. So, Sharia law is basically his legal rule. Mm -hmm. um, now, he has a different side of it, which is basically something that's imposed. Right? So, Donald Trump becoming a president is his universal will, for example, right? I mean, uh, uh, you know, the, the day I was born, the day I will die is part of his universal will. I mean, I cannot delay that. Right, right? and only he knows. Yeah, only why. he knows and, and when. Right, yeah, so, you know, certain things that will keep, will happen no matter what, right? No matter what you do, no matter how, what people try, it will you can't happen. stop it. Yeah. Exactly, right? So if he, if he chooses to protect you, right, people, there are 10 snipers on you, he'll be protected how he protected Abraham, right? Mm -hmm. Even though all the physical means were present, right? Mm -hmm. And part of that is, we don't believe that Jesus was crucified. Yeah, that's true, uh, yeah. But it's not a big deal in itself because like there are other messengers that were, that were killed. So a messenger being killed by people is not impossible, mm. right? But I'm saying that in this particular instance, right, Jesus was actually saved by God Mm -hmm. and he will return near the end of times. I mean, that's the whole concept of what Christianity is, is he, he died, was buried. Yeah, so we don't really... It was, yeah. And then three days later, he rose from the dead. Right. Right? That's, that's the, but, yeah, so that's the crux not, but, of the matter, right? Yeah, that's but a, it's not a very that, there's no there is no Christianity, right? No, I mean, not really, because, I mean, so I'm thinking, like, even if you remove that detail, Islam and Christianity still exist, right? They exist, but what, what I'm saying is... Like, and it's not part of the theology, if you think about it, because... Well, in Christianity, it is, absolutely. That's part of the, that's part of the, that's part of the salvation message, right? No, I mean, for, even if he did not return, everything else would still apply, right? Well, his teachings and so on and so yeah. forth. Yes, okay, yeah, absolutely. From that sense, right? Yeah, 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 yes. So my point is, like, so our belief is that he was saved right right but we do believe in that you know god sending down a table and food and for them to feast on and all that sort of stuff we believe in right and then he will return at the end of times and he will you know obviously be worshiping by the law of muhammad not, not the law of muhammad the, the law that was given up to muhammad mm -hmm. right you know the, the prayers and you know all that sort of stuff and then he will not die a natural death and so on and so forth right but again that's not very connected to who god is or the you know, it's, it's, a part, it's a part of information, part of events and what happened, but not very much the theology of, you know, who God is and what the world is about, right? So, anyway, so the point was that he, he can protect whoever he wants to protect, right. just like how he protected right. Abraham. So, that's essentially, uh, in general, who God is from an Islamic perspective. So, before we move on to the other topics, like, do you, does that make sense to you? Do you have any question? Or I do have a question, yeah. yeah. So... Uh, at the beginning, you were talking about uh, um, God creating man, mm -hmm. right? So you had the angels, you had the, 
You said there was one jinn first, there was Satan, but then but there's more than one. Yeah, so there there are jinns that are followers of Satan. Are they former angels that fell? No, no, no. So angels, oh. yeah. So Satan was never an angel. Right. Because okay. it's a different creation, right? Okay. So angels are good. They're not gonna disobey God. Mm -hmm. So there are angels around us. They protect us. They inspire us to do good things. There are two angels here. They write down everything that we do, so on and so forth. There are angels who bring down rains. There are angels who like who would take our soul out and so on and so forth. Right. But okay. they don't disobey God. Right. They do as they're told. And but there's more, more, more than one. That, that wasn't my question, but like because you said at the beginning there was only one jinn. Well, there was one jinn that was present in there. In heaven, a present in heaven, but there were there was multiple on earth. I don't know that, that detail, but okay. right now, there are many jinns. Right now, yes. Yes, right now, there are many jinns. How many jinns were there at that time, I don't know. Don't know. Yeah, but know, this, but yeah. this particular one is the one that you know. Yeah. Okay. But right now, there are many jinns. From those jinns are Muslims, Christians. And Jews. Jews. So, yeah. for example, the reason I know that is because Christian and um, Jews jinns came and they heard the message of Muhammad, they heard the Quran being recited to them and they accepted it's not. So they just like how human beings upgrade, they also upgrade. Okay. Because Muhammad's message is for all nations. Right. Because there's not gonna be any more prophet after Muhammad. Right. Right? So it's not that it's not only for you know Arabs, it's for non Arabs, Arabs, Europeans, everyone. Mm -hmm. Including the jinns. So some of them accepted, some of them did not. Right? And from them are people who are basically just followers of Satan and their thing is that you know just take people to help out right? right so they just keep moving around and inciting and inspiring and do whatever they want to do sort of thing right. but again they cannot harm unless by the permission of God, God. so they are there to test us right. so you were talking about Adam being done being created and, yeah. and then Adam naming the, yeah. the animals and, and, and so on right and that he already had a concept of good and of evil not that the him, uh, him and his and Eve, his wife, his wife being deceived by Satan, and then taking that what what she was deceived by to her husband, and her husband then participating within that sin. Yeah, so we we don't blame women in that sense, like from a Quranic. Yeah, yeah. No, but, from no, no, not blaming women either. I'm just saying. The no, story. no, like because right. I know like there's a little bit inclination on the women's side in yeah, the present. Yeah, there's right? been bad teaching about that. Yeah, absolutely. so we don't have that in Quran, right? Right. In, in general, it's if there's more blame. Of anything, it's still right. on Adam. So then, in Christian circle, in yeah. Christianity here, right? So then we call that the original sin, right? right. The first sin, right? But then because, so then how how it works then is now man is deprived, the depravity of man, because man have now every man subsequently born <coughs> from uh, the time of Adam and Eve, you know, and their. Uh, you know, Cain and Abel in that story, right? You know, mm. you know, one killing the other brother and so on and so forth. So man is now depraved. Yeah. Right? So so man in itself is not, it has sin already in them when they're born. And now, <coughs> excuse me. And so then God proclaimed in Genesis chapter 3 that be by the woman that the head of the snake will be crushed. I'm probably yeah. paraphrasing. And so <clears throat> within Christian teachings, that is God prophesying the birth of Christ later, who will then defeat Satan, will 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 conquer death, right? And so now our death we will no longer be going we will be, we have now a mediator, a person that so us being sinful as human beings, right? Who receive Christ are then made what uh, they like to say white as snow. Right. So our depravity is then be. So when God, who, you know, if you were to be speeding down the street and doing eighty in the sixty, and a, a police officer pulls you over and writes you a ticket, and you take this to court, and the, <coughs> and the judge says, "Were you speeding?" and you say yes, the judge is going to just keep on saying, okay, well, then pay the ticket, right? Yeah. But within Christian circles is, yes, he did sin, right? But then he believes in me. He is now one of my sheep. And so now God, the Father, looks at you through the lens of Christ and sees that you are with Christ. And so then you have been forgiven through his sacrifice. Right. And and you can yeah. enter into, into the God, kingdom yeah. of heaven. Right. So that's... So let me give you an Islamic version of all that. Yes, okay, please. Good. 
So there's two, two ways of thinking about it, right? One thing that we studied... But that all falls from the, the, the fall of man, that's right. what I'm saying. Yeah. Right. So one thing that we studied in math and university is like, you know, any false assumption, right, can prove any other false assumption, right? So, uh, so if, you have a fault, if, you, if you accept anything that's false, then I should be able to prove a whole bunch of false things from there. Right. Right? So that's one way of doing that, which is, as I was saying, like, you know, once you make that exception for Jesus, you can make that exception, that, okay, why ask for Jesus, not us, you know, Mary and then St. Michael and so on and so forth, right? So that's one thing. A false thing would lead to false thing, right? So that's one way of thinking, like, okay, if I take these assumptions, right, of this, this worldview that you gave me, then that would imply this, this, and this, and that. And some of these implications would be, like, so obviously untrue. Mm -hmm. So this can say, like, these assumptions cannot be true, right? The way I'd like to do it is I'd to, as I said earlier, to give you the Islamic version of these things, Islamic understanding of those things, and then you deciding mm -hmm. which one makes sense. Because essentially, when I'll come to this, like, how do I know Islam is the truth? And, and I'll come to that, but the essential thing is that your heart will tell you. And that is the reason that you had all these questions that you were mentioning earlier that were coming from your heart. So regarding original sin, uh, we believe that Adam was forgiven. Right? Right. That's the big that's difference. That's the first thing. Yeah. Second thing is, no man carries the burden of others. No right? man carries the burden, burden of, of another. Others. Right? So that, that is not from a fair God. Right? Um, and then, from an Islamic perspective, a child, when he's born, he's not, he doesn't have any responsibility because he's not able to distinguish the right from the wrong. Mm -hmm. So, from an Islamic you know, perspective, like, you know, he's, not, he's not required to pray or fast until he reaches that age, age of, of innocence is over. distinction. Yeah. Right? Right. So from that angle, like, there's no there's no sin that we are born with, right? Uh, from a fourth angle, like it does not, to me, it does not resonate with me that why would God kill a son of his his own son, right? Or why would somebody else suffer? And why does God need to tell someone to suffer for him to forgive my sin? And what does suffering means in that context, anyways? Because if it's essentially from God, maybe he doesn't even feel pain, or like, you know, what does that even mean, right? Mm -hmm. And how can it be fair? For someone to just say, oh yeah, I believe in that story, and just because of that, you know, write off my sins, right? Because God is essentially very forgiving and merciful, but He also establishes justice. So if somebody wrongs me, I mean, even if Muslim wrongs a non-Muslim, there are consequences of that, right? And you just don't say, oh, because I believe in God, one God, and Muhammad is the messenger of God, you know, I can just have a free ticket. I mean, to the point that these animals, cows and donkeys and horses, they will be brought on the day of judgment and the one that transgressed against the another, the one with the horns that transgressed with, with, uh, to the one that did not have horns, will be given the ability to be taken recompense from and then they will be made dust. So if the God is going to establish a level of justice like that, how is anybody going to have a free right just because he believes in a certain narration? Mm -hmm. so, so that's the Islamic understanding of uh, you know, the original saying, um, you know, expiation of sin, uh, Adam being forgiven. Um, that's it, right? Well, yeah, we're talking about the original sin and the depravity of the man, of man that you're saying that yeah. God forgave. So it actually, yeah. yeah. So we actually believe that if you think about it, um, that somebody. Okay, so look, so you have a certain status with God, right? So the more you obey God, the higher your rank become with God, right? The more spiritual you become the more closer to God you become, the more love of God you earn, right? Mm -hmm. When you commit a sin, you drop. Right. Right? But when you have a true repentance, you can actually go above what you were before. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. You see that? Because now, uh, the act of being sorry and ashamed and repenting can actually make you go up. Right? So that, And that just merely doing good deeds can actually bring you down too. So here's an example, right? Because so that's the intent of the deed. Right. So it's intent of the deed, also arrogance, right? Mm -hmm. So for example, if I do a good deed, um, right? Mm -hmm. And I do good deed, good deed, good deed, and then it's like, you know, look at me, I'm doing so many good deeds, and look at this youth, he's like, you know, playing around. Your vanity all. kicks in. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that would basically start dropping, because now I'm looking down at people. Regardless that you're still blessing someone, you're still helping. Exactly. But God doesn't. God sees the, the heart behind it. Exactly. So arrogance, so it's going to drop me, right? So imagine that, okay, so... Let's say I don't drink alcohol because God forget, right? Mm -hmm. So because of that, I go up, right? And then somebody else drinks alcohol. Mm -hmm. He still loves God, but he just has this thing that, you know, he falls into. Mm -hmm. 
So he, he drops down. Now, my girlfriend told me about this, and she said, for, she used that as an example, and she said, like, so the Muslim who drinks, even though he knows that that is something that's forbidden, forbidden for 40 days, you have, uh, there is no, uh, what's the word she used? Uh, prayer. Yeah, your prayers would not be heard. Right? Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so that's a good point, but again, into that, but so let me just do this mm. with this example, right? So those are additional details, right? Yeah. So good. those are like, compared to what we are talking about today, this is like very insignificant. Right. Right. You can be a Muslim and you can be drinking. Right? Right, yeah. Because right. so this is the example that actually clarifies it, right? So the point being, okay, so I don't drink, I get closer to God, right? Mm -hmm. Now, that's fine. This guy drinks, mm -hmm. he still loves God. Mm -hmm. After he drinks, he becomes really, really sorry that, you mm -hmm. know, I fall into it again. He cries, he does charity, he does a lot of good deeds, he goes to help people, God, please forgive me. Next time I'm not going to do it, he's going to really, really try hard. Because of all that crying and, you know, asking for forgiveness, all the good deeds, he can go above me. Right? Uh huh. And 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 if I find out that this guy drank, I'm like, what a stupid person you are, you keep drinking all the time. Boom, I go down again. You know, right? because you're judging and now I'm judging him, judge. I'm looking down at him and all this right. sort of stuff, right? And who are you to say? Yeah. Exactly. I can advise him, mm -hmm. but if I'm looking down upon him, that's a different thing, right? Yes. And he can try hard, hard, hard. And maybe he'll fall down once again. He does the same thing again, right? Because it all this time, I'm also having my own sins too, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm not focusing on prayers. Maybe I'm distracted in my prayers. Maybe I'm praying late. Whatever. I could be doing a whole bunch of other things, right? So everybody would have their own things. So the point being that, oh, so this is, again, we're talking about the original sin. The point being that after repentance, somebody can actually be better than what they were before the sin, right? So we don't have this notion of that, you know, Adam drop down from his status or what have you also sort of, same thing with moses right he killed the man accidentally what yeah. have you he repented and, yeah well and, and it's like the first church I ever started attending their their teaching was uh, like uh adam mm -hmm. by being deceived mm -hmm. gave up his status as the ruler of this world and gave the 